Hey Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark and today we're checking out some more Reddit stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider and a like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. And let's crack on with today's first story. Much love guys. Now today's first story comes from the Am I the Arsehole subreddit from Safe Criticism 8500 and says, Would I be the arsehole if I play a song that my mum chose for her funeral? knowing it might offend some attendees. My mum recently passed away, and our family, primarily me, are making the arrangements for the upcoming funeral. My mum always had a really excellent sense of humour, and before she passed, she told not only me, but all of the palliative care staff at the hospital that the song she wanted played at her funeral was Ding Dong, The Witch Is Dead, from The Wizard of Oz. I managed to at least talk her out of the soundtrack version sung by the Munchkins and got her to agree to the classier jazz version by Ella Fitzgerald. Now, I agree with my mum that this would be a really funny thing to play at a funeral and would showcase her sense of humour to a T. However, I'm also very aware that not everyone that's going to come to the funeral is going to take that joke in the same spirit. I think that some of the more religious friends and family members might be extra upset because there's a certain repeated line that implies she's going to hell. Plus, we're explicitly having a non-religious service and one of said family members has already expressed disappointment with that. So on the one hand, I think it's my mum's funeral and I should respect their wishes above anyone else's opinions. But on the other hand, I realise that funerals are for the living and it's pretty disrespectful to do that to do something that's going to upset those actually in attendance, when obviously my mum isn't going to know one way or the other. Would I be the arsehole if I still play the song my mum picked? If it matters, my alternate choice would be Landslide by Fleetwood Mac, which was her favourite song, and we all listened to it in the hospital together after she passed. Now for me, I wouldn't be offended by this at all, but I could see some people maybe being shocked if it came out of nowhere. So personally for me, I would still do it, but I would find some way to let people know beforehand before it's played, whether you include that in your eulogy or you let people know beforehand in some way. And I kind of like the fact that it, it will lighten the mood for the, for the majority of people who knew your mum. They must know about her sense of humour and would go along with it and would likely find it funny themselves. But also, I just want to say I'm really sorry for your loss at the same time. But Aleri says, not the arsehole, and you introduce the song with something like, Now you all know my mum had a quirky sense of humour, and this was the one song she requested. If you're offended, well, you'll have to take that up with her. <laughs> Botswa says, why not put it in the program? There's usually a little folded paper thing with info in it for the mourners. You could also have the person who is leading the funeral to say something like, and at the request of mum's name, here's the song she chose to say goodbye with. I'm so sorry for your loss and I hope you find a way to honour your mum and the haters can stuff it. Opie says that's a really good idea. I haven't started drafting the program yet so I didn't think of that. But it would at least make it explicit that it's what my mum requested and not just me trying to be funny or whatever. Thanks. Cordelia says anyone who really knew your mother would love it. It would be a wonderful way to honour her memory. Make an announcement before playing it. Something like mum specifically requested this be played. Please do not take it was disrespectful or that it implies she's going to hell. The line is, she's gone to where the goblins go, below. We see this as simply below the ground, not hell. I looked up the lyrics to be sure, there's no mention of hell. And if she was really against a religious type of funeral, you could play Going Home, a version of Dirac's fifth symphony, which is just gorgeous and can be heard either way. So, on the one hand, I think my mum's funeral and I should respect her wishes above anyone else's opinions. This is right and you should go with that. Funerals are for the living, but her surviving children and spouse are most important. My condolences for your loss. And a final comment from Weird Jellyfish who says you would not be the arsehole. Your mum made her wishes clear. Anyone who would be offended is probably someone that didn't know her very well. I went to a funeral for a farmer a few years ago and they had a loop of four songs going the whole time. You could get through the first three songs, but as soon as She Thinks My Tractor's Sexy by Kenny Chesney came on, everyone was laughing. My dad has secured a promise from me since childhood to play Highway to Hell by ACDC at his funeral. My great aunt has made me swear to throw the flowers from a casket to see who will be next. 
<laughs> These are the funerals. Some people have a sense of humor, some don't. Your mom had one, and this is a wish. Honor it. Opie came in with a mini update two weeks later and said, we decided to wait a bit to hold the celebration of life in nicer weather and closer to what would have been my mum's birthday. But I decided I'm going to play the Ella Fitzgerald version. Then two and a half months later, Opie comes in with a full update and says, hi everyone. I figured I'd come back and give you an all in update on how things turned out with my mum's memorial service. I'm really grateful for everyone who convinced me that playing the song she chose was the right option. So yes, I decided to go ahead and play the Ella Fitzgerald version of Ding Dong The Witch Is Dead after incorporating the story behind it in my eulogy, which a few people suggested as the best way to bridge the gap between a serious occasion and a silly song. We poured a toast for everyone first and I told them we would raise a glass during the song and then introduced it like this. I'm sure you all know my mother had a wicked sense of humor. And if you know where I'm going with this, you know why I said it that way. For as long as I can remember, she told me and everyone else that she wanted a certain song played at a funeral. Because she wanted everyone to laugh, not cry. And because she knew she wouldn't have to deal with it if anybody didn't get the joke. But I think you'll all get it. And despite the circumstances, I hope this will be another happy memory that we all associate with my mum. And then I played the song. And people immediately started smiling and chuckling when they caught on to what it was. A couple of people I worried about not finding it funny seemed to take it well enough. They weren't giggling like everyone else, but I think they were accepting of the song being what my mum wanted. And afterwards, a few people told me that the song was perfect and that they could totally see my mum requesting that. All in all, it was a very nice celebration of life and I'm happy with the way things turned out. Oh, dearie me, that one got me going. Bloody onion ninjas around here again. Just brought back memories of, you know, when I was talking to my mum, I can remember sitting on the bed next to her when we found out, you know, she hasn't got much longer with us and we were discussing funeral arrangements and I can always remember that line which, which is mentioned a couple of times within this story that, you know, the funeral service is for the living. But I am super glad for you, Opie. I'm glad that things did go in the best way and I think you handled it perfectly. And I know this one will never happen, but I always say to people, you know, when I'm gone, what I want to be done is like a trebuchet on a beach and launched out to sea just because I think that'd be hilarious ragdoll style. I mean, it. Probably, <laughs> I mean, some people probably wouldn't find it very funny, but I just, the image in my head is just too much, man. <laughs> but now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and let's move on to another story. Now, this story comes from a throwaway account from the Relationship Advice subreddit and says, My fiancé told his parents we weren't together. My fiancé Jack and I have been in a relationship for almost four years now and have a child together. My son, 10, from a previous relationship who he helped me raise since my son was five. He proposed to me two months ago and I'm so happy. I struggled with discovering my sexuality and finally came to terms with being gay two years after my son was born and when I met Jack. I felt like my life was finally coming together. I had a fantastic son and a wonderful partner but since Sunday I've been conflicted about what to do. Jack's parents came for a surprise visit on Sunday and are staying with his sister. We went over to see them and he told me I was his best friend and nothing more. I kept quiet about it while we were there but when we got home i asked him why he said i was just a friend he told me that his parents didn't know we were together i was shocked and didn't know what to say so i just walked away and went into our bedroom for context i've only met jack's parents twice once when we were still friends and the second when we just started dating he didn't want to tell them the second time as we'd only been together for a couple of months which i understood he talked to his parents every now and then and I thought he would have mentioned that we were together, especially when we got engaged. His parents were a bit absent when he was growing up but have gotten closer the past few years. They were supportive when he came out as bi and didn't have any problem with him dating men. He has no problem telling other people we're together or expressing his love for me. But when it comes to his parents, he doesn't. I feel like he's ashamed or embarrassed to be with me and I don't know what to do. He's the love of my life and the first romantic partner I could be myself with. I don't want our relationship to end, but how am I supposed to carry on when he won't even tell his parents about us? 
I know I need to talk to him about this, but I don't know how to bring it up. I feel so upset about all of this. And we're starting the comments with no lifeguard who says, I don't think he's ashamed of you or your family. He's probably ashamed of what they will say to you or to him. I'm bi. My sister knows this. My close friends know this. Some of my co-workers know this, but my parents don't. My dad is very homophobic. And even if I come out to my parents one day, I wouldn't want them to know if I was dating a woman, as I'm afraid my dad would say something or do something bad to her. I wouldn't want to bring her around him, but I also would never hide her from my family. Hiding your partner is painful to everyone. Talk with your fiancé about this. He may have issues with his sexuality when it comes to his parents, since it seems they are the only ones he's hiding you from. He needs to know that this behavior hurts you. The next commenter says your fiancé might be trying to protect you from them, especially if they've been estranged. You need to have a discussion with him about them, one where you aren't assuming he's ashamed of you, but rather than he might be ashamed of them. And even if he isn't ashamed of them, they might be a threat to him and his chosen life. They aren't automatically entitled to information about him or his life, especially if they've done something in the past that he had to be protected from. Hello Gen X says, it sounds like your fiance is gray rocking his parents, which means he's intentionally not telling them important info about his life. There are many reasons that he would do this and none of them are because of you. Gray rocking parents is usually because the parents currently are or previously were abusive, narcissistic, pessimistic, controlling, or some other mental health condition or personality disorder. Maybe his parents think bisexuality is just a phase and wouldn't be okay with him marrying a man, or maybe his mom is one of those dramatic types that will take over all the wedding planning and drive him crazy. You won't know until you have an open and honest conversation with him. And one final comment from Blueberry Batu says, Hey, I think we need to sit and talk. I was hurt that you didn't tell your parents that we're partners. Is there a reason for that? And continues, could be any number of reasons. He may as well feel as if his parents don't deserve to know much about his life. You've only known them a short time from an adult perspective. He's known them his whole life. Abuse takes many forms and neglect is one of them. A story that sounds relatively mundane to you isn't necessarily the entire truth of the matter, especially when you factor in child's emotions. His parents may well be supportive now. That doesn't mitigate years of him feeling as if he didn't matter to them. Talk to your partner. He's the only one who has insight into his own thoughts and feelings. Sure, maybe he's hiding things out of shame. He wouldn't be the first. He won't be the last to do so. And he might be just reverting the behavior he knows with his parents. To share as little information with them as possible. Talk, talk, talk. Love isn't enough. And without communication, real communication, love will never survive. So around three days later, Opie comes in to update and says, so Thursday night, Jack and I sat down and talked. I asked him why he didn't tell his parents about us and he couldn't answer me. I told him how it made me feel and he just shrugged. I asked if he ever did this with his previous relationships, which he said no. I asked if his parents expected him to settle down with a woman instead of a man. And he said his parents would be fine regardless of who he ends up with. I then reluctantly asked if it had anything to do with Max, my son, and he said no again. At this point, I'm even more confused and started to get frustrated. I don't understand why he's hiding our relationship from them. I ended up asking him if it had something to do with me, and I was met with silence. I asked him what I did wrong, and he turned away from me and said that I didn't do anything wrong. I kept asking him, but he still wouldn't answer me. I was getting annoyed and was going to go to the bedroom to cool down and try again tomorrow. But before I could leave the room, Jack spoke up. He told me that he was having doubts about our relationship and he didn't want his parents to know about us in case he decided to break up with me. I didn't know what to say, so I just stood there staring at him. When he noticed I wasn't going to say anything, he carried on talking. He told me that he began questioning our relationship before we got engaged and the reason he proposed was because he thought it would make him feel better about us, but it didn't. I asked him if he wanted to break up, and he said he didn't know. I feel numb right now. I thought Jack loved me like I love him, but apparently not. The thought of him only proposing to me because he thought it would make him not want to break up with me hurt so much. So I guess the reason he didn't tell his parents about us wasn't anything to do with them, but it was to do with us everyone who said it was between him and his parents thank you for giving me a shred of hope that it wasn't me i really don't know where to go from here 
Do I give him time or do I break up with him? I feel so lost. And a couple of top comments from that says, I'm not gay, but I have been in love. If someone hid me from their family when they had never hid any of their previous relationships, went so far as to ask me to marry them, but still was unsure of the relationship, I would leave because maybe this person loves you, but they don't love you enough. You deserve to be loved with the same intensity as you love. Anything else and you are both just settling. Snowman Sweet says, I'm so sorry that this happened to you. This says way more about him than it does about you. I would be very, very hesitant to continue this relationship. If you do, you should get into couples counseling if you're able to. And I agree with the first comment on this one in that, you know, I don't see this as a relationship. I don't see he's treating you as an equal and you deserve much better than that. And I think that really pissed me off about this is that he didn't think he was going to stay with you, but proposed to you thinking that's going to plaster over whatever, whatever was going on in his head. Absolute bullshit. Playing with your emotions like that is insane. But now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below and let's move on to another story. Now our next story comes from the Am I the Arsehole subreddit, doesn't have an update as yet, from Icy Lingenberry 8128 and says, Am I the Arsehole for banning my parents from a family event because they don't like my brother's wife? I'm always tempted just to say not the arsehole straight away in this situation because Spidey Sense is already telling me that the parents are arseholes, but we'll find out, we'll find out. So my 30 female little brother is 23. I have another brother that's 20, but this is about the 23 year old who I will call Blake. A few months ago, Blake eloped with his girlfriend, Shay, 19 female. Our parents and my three sisters, Mary, 22 female, Bea, 27 female, and Sarah, 25 female, were livid, like unusually angry. I was a little confused, but I spoke to him, and to me, it seemed like he and his girlfriend loved each other very much and just made the rash decision to elope in Vegas. We live about three hours from Vegas, so it's a popular day trip destination, so they were there for the day and eloped. Like, yeah, it was a little silly, but I don't understand why they're so angry about it. Blake and Shay didn't even tell anyone about their marriage until two months later. Blake and Shay are a very wholesome and, dare I say, perfect couple. They very obviously love each other, live together and split the bills, both study very good degrees and have two cats. I've always said you can't put a timeline on life. If they want to do marriage earlier than usual, who cares? My parents have made a point to not invite Shay to any family events since. They call up Blake and say, don't bring your girlfriend. They refuse to acknowledge the marriage. Blake came the first two times they did this, but left very early. And he's always politely declined all invitations since then. I've tried to tell my parents that they are pushing Blake away and soon they can expect to never hear from him again, but they don't seem to care. They take every opportunity to insult Shay, even though they used to love her before the elopement. It's my son's birthday soon and I'm planning a big party. I sent the guest list in a family group chat and my parents saw that Shay was invited. They demanded that she's taken off, but I refused. They were acting in a way that made me suspect they were going to make a scene there, so I banned them. I don't want to isolate my younger brother and he hasn't been to any family events since he got married besides the two he left early. They are infuriated. They're threatening to show up anyway and think I have no right to ban them for someone who isn't part of the family. My sisters and youngest brother think I'm overreacting and I could have instead warned them to behave and told them they would be removed if they couldn't do so. They think the ban is nuclear. My parents are demanding an invite and an apology. Am I... The arsehole. Royally Oki says not the arsehole. Your parents didn't get the memo that children grow up. They deserve to be banned and they should stay banned until they apologize and learned how to behave. It's easy for your other siblings to say you've overreacted because it's not their situation. I'm sure your brother will appreciate the support. Opie says I'm currently the only one with kids so my parents would be pretty upset if I banned them from seeing their only grandkids. My brother definitely appreciates my support in his own way. He's usually very quiet and not that expressive. Besides, when he's with Shay, and he randomly texted me the other day that he wishes he invited me to the elopement. It was very touching. Evening Mulberry says, and not the arsehole, your parents are acting very irrational. Surely there must be more to this than them eloping. And even if it is about the elopement, why do they solely blame her? This is just odd. Opie says, as far as I know, it's only about the elopement. 
My parents and my brother haven't mentioned anything else. Kelly Smith says, if I were a parent in this situation, I'd be concerned that a 23-year-old was marrying a 19-year-old. I'd be doubtful the marriage would last, especially because one is 19. That said, my concerns would lead me to act the opposite. I'd be open and supportive to these young people, keep communication open so I could be there for any struggles, and to make the young woman ostracized is horrible. OP, you're acting like a good sister. And a final comment from Wealth OK, who says, I think you're doing the right thing. Your parents are being awful, obviously, and by reacting that way about Shay being at the party you are hosting, they are putting you in a terrible situation. They're putting themselves in a situation where now there are consequences for their actions. Sorry they're blaming you for their own behavior. You're not the arsehole. I think you're doing the right thing. Hopefully, it'd be a wake-up call to the parents. I know people on Reddit are always like, cut out those awful parents entirely, without understanding how difficult and traumatizing it is for adult children to do that. Even if the parents are obviously misbehaving, I hope the parents come around. Truly, sorry this is happening. Now, what do you guys make of this situation? How would you deal with it if it was you? Some people are suspecting additional information on the matter. What do you think? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. Now, just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories. Your love, your support, your time always means the absolute world to me. So thank you so, so much. And hopefully, I'll see you in the next one. Take care and much love.